Many of us have been staying home, working from home, doing everything from home for six months now, which makes us hyper aware of everything in our space because we don't leave it. It's a lot harder to turn a blind eye to clutter or junk or excess when you're living in it 24 hours a day. So today I thought I would share things that you can declutter in 2020. Most of these ideas are specific to this year and these circumstances, although there are a couple of just general General ones I thought of that I wanted to throw in as well. And obviously this isn't a one size fits all guide. You should only declutter the things that make sense for you and your life, but maybe there will be a couple things on this list that do resonate with you. Number one is the puzzles you've done. If you're anything like me, you hit the puzzles real hard in the beginning of quarantine. I think at my peak, I was doing two to three a week. It was basically my only pastime for a while and the puzzle market it was hot in the beginning of quarantine. There was a shortage. It was not easy to get your hands on a puzzle. So I would take anything I could get. My bar was real low. So I've ended up with a whole bunch of puzzles. Some of them kind of weird. There were some that I knew I wouldn't do again. So I've been in the process of rehoming them. I've donated some, I've given some to friends, but it might be time for you to let go of some of the quarantine puzzles. And they're such a fun thing to swap with friends. They're easy to get rid of. Masks that don't fit you. I feel like a lot of us went through kind of a similar journey with the mask thing in quarantine. Everything that first month happened so fast. It just feels like a blur. All of a sudden, everyone I'm seeing is wearing a mask. I don't have a mask. And I ended up turning to the weirdest pockets of the internet to try and find something that was in stock, ready to ship. A lot of sites were like, masks are ready to ship in four to five weeks. And I was like, I don't have time for that. So in my desperate shopping spree for masks, I ended up with a couple not great ones, like ones that are too tight around my ears and they like pull my ears forward and out or they're just like too small for my face. And now we all have the mask thing down. We've all found a mask that's comfortable and that we can wear, they're back in stock. So if your experience was like mine and you ended up up with a couple wonky masks in the beginning, maybe it's time to let those go or pass them on to somebody that they would suit better. Any loungewear you haven't worn since March. If you have pajamas, robes, slippers, any kind of casual wear that you haven't touched during this time, you're never gonna wear it. Like this was fashion week for all of those items. If you haven't been wearing them, they're clearly not doing it for you. And then kind of in a similar thread, you could consider decluttering any clothing you're not excited to wear once this is all over. There are some things in my closet that I look at and I think I cannot wait to wear that out to a happy hour with friends and people. And then there are some other things I look at and I'm like, I don't know if I wanna wear that again. There are things that are like really rigid and not stretchy, which I know that I'm going to have to, to a certain extent, get used to pants with buttons again, but you should feel excited about the items in your wardrobe. And if there are things that you're looking at and you're like, I don't miss wearing that, then it probably means you don't love them. Which brings me to my next item. I felt like this one deserved its own special shout out. It's bras you won't go back to. Let's be real, 2020 has not been good for the bra. And rightfully so, because the older I get, the more I realize how much bras suck. I don't know why I spent so many years wearing these stiff, rigid underwire things with clasps and like scratchy material. 2020 has officially closed the door on awful bras for me. If it has underwire or scratchy material, I don't want it. I I want like soft, stretchy, feels seamless with my body. And if 2020 has changed bras for you too, you might have some that it's time to get rid of. Home office supplies you don't use. This could be pens, highlighters, notepads, sticky notes, binders, folders, a stapler, whatever. Kind of like the loungewear, if you've been working from home this whole time and there are office supplies you haven't used, you're never going to use them. This was their time to shine. And if they're untouched, you might consider parting with them. Your refrigerator and freezer. Chances are you've been making a lot of meals at home this year, trying out new recipes. And when you're buying more groceries and cooking more, you tend to have more stuff in your fridge and it's easier for things to get kind of pushed to the back or down 
down in a drawer and forgotten about. Like half a lemon or some sour cream you bought for a taco night a couple months ago that's now expired. Cooking tools and kitchen gadgets you don't use. If you've been cooking at home all year and you haven't found a use for these things, you probably never will. Similarly, you could look at your dishware and Tupperware. If you've been home 24 seven for the majority of the year, you know what a realistic amount of mugs you can use is or food storage containers. Maybe you can pare some of that stuff down. Board games you don't play. If you've been stuck at home with your family or your roommates for the last six months and you still haven't wanted to bring out that board game to play it, you probably don't like it. And board games are such a great thing to pass along. Maybe it's just not something that's for you, but maybe you know a family with kids the right age that would really like it. Books you've read that you won't read again. Now I know that there are some book lovers out there that are really into their book collections and obviously this one isn't for you. But if you hit the books hard in quarantine, you probably have some that you won't read again and you can give them to somebody else. I have a Kindle now, I've had one for years, but back when I did still buy physical books, one of my favorite things about them was that I could push them on someone else when I was done reading, be like, take this, it's so good, you have to read it, tell me what you think. And then these last couple of ideas are just general ones that I thought of. One of them is that thing you bought your pet that they refuse to use. If you have a pet, I am certain that at some point you have bought them something that you thought that they would love, that they would be really grateful for, and they will have nothing to do with it. For most of us, this is an ongoing thing throughout the years. For example, my cat is seven years old, and you would assume that by now I've figured her out. Last week, I spent $30 on one of those cat water fountain drinking things because all of the reviews said, oh my gosh, my cat loves this. My cat drinks so much more water now. She will not go near it. She'll stand like three feet away and look at it, but she won't go up and try to drink from it. She won't play with it with her paw, nothing. Now the glass of water that's on the coffee table, she can put her paw in that. So if you've bought your pet something that they won't use, consider donating it to an animal shelter because there are so many other animals out there that might really love having that thing. I'm gonna give my cat like one or two more weeks to warm up to this water fountain thing and then I will probably rehome it. And then the last thing you could consider decluttering is that beauty product that doesn't work for you. I feel like we all have these, whether it's a shampoo that made your hair feel dry or greasy or a foundation or concealer that didn't quite match your skin tone, except that it wasn't for you. Maybe you have a friend that it will work for and pass it on. So those are some mostly 2020 themed ideas of things you can declutter. If you have any ideas for stuff people could clear out this year, let everyone know what it is down in a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you know when new videos are posted. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I run my website on Squarespace and I love it. It's so easy. It's an all-in-one platform, so it has everything you need to build a site. You can build an online store to sell things or a portfolio to share images with clients. They've got award-winning templates, 24-7 customer service and they offer a free trial. So head over to squarespace.com to sign up. You can design your site, get it looking the way you want it to. And then when you're ready, visit squarespace.com slash Allison Anderson to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And I will see you next time. Bye.